All right, so Michael Larson one is asking uh, the question of just what have been the most compelling, um, most meaningful racket innovations, I guess, in the last 20 years, which is, um, it's an interesting question because a lot of paint jobs every year and we get a lot of things that seem like it's a lot of marketing speak, um, but what's really changed with the rackets in, in the last 20 years. Um, I mean, the biggest one, I think, I mean, at this point, it's probably 20 plus years, just slightly, but you know, when Bob Lock came out with the first pure drive, that was kind of the beginner of the, the tweener revolution. So tweener meaning in between power and control. So just an incredibly versatile racket design um, that came about in the late, late 90s. I think Carlos Moya won a French Open in 98 with it and um, just really revolutionized the game because it allowed people to access an extremely powerful racket that was controlled. So um, you could say pure drive, uh, kind of started that, but again, that's been 20, 20 plus years ago now. So uh, since then, there's just been iterations of that. Every brand kind of has their version of that tweener specification. Very popular, um, you know, the tweeners for most of our brands that we carry tend to be the best selling racket silos uh, from every brand. I'm pointing to Babolat because they're the ones who kind of started it with the Pure Drive back in the day. Um, we could all say the clash, I would say from a material standpoint, just the, the carbon mapping techniques that they use with this racket. Um, it's definitely been something that people have caught on to. This has been out in the market for more than a year now. And again, it comes down to the user, whether you feel it's a beneficial update or not, but just the way that the racket bends in different dimensions than other rackets, it's actually got a fairly stiff hoop to it, but then the shaft bends and it's just got a very unique feel to it. Uh, it's very compliant, easy to hit with. Um, I'd say people that have an extremely fast swing or an extremely slow swing, maybe aren't the demographic for this racket. You're not gonna really see this on tour probably, but um, just the way that they've come up with carbon mapping that allows the racket to bend in some different dimensions than just anything else out on the marketplace. Um, you know, whether you think it's for real or not, I'd say hit with it and judge for yourself. But, um, you know, outside of that, it's, it's really tough. It's hard to reinvent the wheel every year. Uh, brands feel like they're on an 18 to 24 month product cycle. Uh, so you do need to keep things fresh. They've got to keep fresh looking graphics on tour with who they sponsor. Um, but in terms of what's under the hood, is it really a meaningful change from year to year? Most of the time it's, it's a lot of cosmetics and just minor tune ups. So, um, it's a great question, but again, it comes down to the user in terms of how much you think they've improved the newest generation from the previous generation, or was it just a paint job and, and snake oil? There's a little bit of that that goes on too, to be honest. So, um, but uh, no, Clash and Pure Drive, I would say, are probably the two biggest innovations in the last 20 years that we've really seen uh, positive success with. Okay, so we've got a question from Zhao Yang Lin, and uh, in a nutshell, asking about, uh, he's playing with a Pure Arrow, stringing with uh, Babolat Pro Hurricane Tour 17 gauge, and asking about string movement that he gets. Uh, he's said he's, after he's playing about 10 or 20 hours with it, uh, he's noticed that the strings are kind of moving all over the place, and, and should he consider changing the way he plays to prevent this? No, in a nutshell, no. Um, <laughs> if you're hitting spin of any kind, um, part of that is you're hitting you know, with a, a low to high, uh, swing plane, which is going to cause the strings to move as they impart spin on the ball. So if you like hitting top spin, string movement is a lot of where the, the, the spin on the ball comes from. So you need to have some string movement. Now, some strings do a better job of snapping back into place than others. Also, the longer you play with the string, the coating on the string will start to wear off and you'll get kind of a grittier feel to the string. It'll start to click around a little bit more. I mean, you'll see the players in between points you know, some of it's maybe a nervous tick where they're rearranging their strings and everything else, but part of that's putting the strings back in place. So the strings moving around doesn't indicate that you're doing anything wrong. It's really a function of the fact that you're imparting spin on the ball, which is causing the strings to move around, and you just need to move them back into place. Part of the game, not a big deal, not change the way you're playing, because to be honest, to go back to hitting the ball perfectly flat with a continental grip, I think those days are long gone. That's how people played with wooden rackets and aluminum rackets. The modern game now, people are hitting with semi-western forehands, two-handed backhands, heavy topspin, heavy slice. Strings are gonna move around a little bit. So part of the game, don't change a thing. Just maybe move the strings back and you'll be fine.